Hello everyone. In this video, I'll take up the next chapter of Financial Accounting 6, that is Final Accounts of Banking Companies. First, let's understand the meaning of banking companies. According to Section 5 of Banking Regulation Act 1949, a banking company means the accepting for the purpose of lending or investment of deposits of money from the public, repayable on demand or otherwise, and withdrawn by check, draft, order or otherwise. Okay. In short, a banking company means and includes any company which carries on business or which transacts the business of banking in India. So, in simple words, a banking company means a company which is engaged in the business of banking in India. Okay. Then, let's see about preparation and presentation of final accounts of banking companies in India. The final accounts of banking companies include profit and loss account and balance sheet. These final accounts of banking companies have to be prepared at the end of the financial year on 31st March every year. The banks also prepares half yearly accounts on 30th September every year. The final accounts must be audited by a person who is duly qualified under the law. Every banking company must obtain the approval of RBI regarding the appointment of an auditor. Three copies of the balance sheet and profit and loss account together with auditor's report must be submitted to the RBI within three months from the end of the period. Every banking company must file three copies of final accounts and the auditor's report with registrar of companies. These accounts are also presented in the annual general meeting for the approval of shareholders. After it is approved in the shareholders meeting, the banking company's rules 1949 uh, prescribes that the accounts and auditor's reports should be published in a newspaper circulating at a place where the banking company has its principal office within six months from the end of the period. The RBI can conduct inspection of the books of accounts of the banking company at any time or on receiving the direction from the central government. These are the rules regarding the preparation and presentation of final accounts of banking companies. Then let's see the format of profit and loss account and balance sheet of banking companies. So this is the format of balance sheet which is also called form A. On the top we have to write balance sheet of dash bank. In the next line we have to write as on uh, 31st March which year we have to mention. So if you see the format of balance sheet it consists of four columns. In the first column we will be writing capital liabilities and assets. In the second column that is for writing the note number. Okay, Earlier it was called schedule number but now it has changed to note number. In the third column we have to write the figures relating to current year and in the last column we have to write the figures relating to previous year. This is because when you see the balance sheet you can easily compare the figures of previous year with the current year. This is uh, this balance sheet is prepared in the vertical form. So first we have to write about capital and liabilities. Okay, Under that note number 1 is with regard to capital of the banking company. Then note number 2 we have to write about reserves and surplus. Note number 3 is regarding deposits. Then note number 4 is with regard to borrowings. It includes both short term and long term. And the fifth note is relating to other liabilities and provisions. So when you add from note number 1 to 5 it will give you the total of of capital and liabilities. Then in the next line we have to write about the assets under that sixth note is relating to cash and balance with RBI. Then the seventh note is relating to balances with bank and money at call and short notice. Note number eight is with regard to investments. It includes both short term and long term. And note number nine is with regard to advances. Advances here is nothing but loans given to the customers. Then note number 10 is regarding the fixed assets. Note number 11 is with regard to other assets. Okay. When you add from note number six to 11, you get the total assets. Here here the total asset must be equal to total liabilities. Then we are writing the footnotes. Under footnote, first we will be showing the contingent liabilities. Uh, it carries note number 12. Okay. Then in the next line, we have to write other uh, footnote that is bills for collection it does not carry any note number we have to just write the amount okay so this is the format in which the balance sheet of a banking company is prepared then let's see the uh, format of profit and loss account so here it is called form b on the top we have to write profit and loss account for the year ended 31st march dash okay so here also it consists of four columns 
first column for writing the particulars, second column for writing the note number, third column for writing the uh, amounts relating to current year and the fourth one relating to uh, amounts of previous year ok. So, in the particulars column first we will be showing the income ok. Under that note number 13 is with regard to interest earned ok. Interest earned means when the banks advances loan to the customer it charges interest on that ok on various kinds of loan. So, that is the source of income for the banking company. So, we have to write such interest collected as a source of income in note number 13. Then note number 14 is with regard to other income other than interest whatever the income the banking company earned that must be shown under note number 14 ok. When you add note number 13 and 14 we get total income. Then in the next line we have to show about the second heading expenditure ok. Under that the fifth uh, 15 note number is with regard to interest expended means interest paid by the banking company to the customer on which the banking company pays the interest on SB account then recurring deposits then fixed deposits ok. On these banking company gives interest to the customer. So, that comes under note number 15 which is called interest expended ok. Then the note number 16 is with regard to operating expenses. So, all the operating expenses of the banking company it must be shown under note number 16. Then we have to show provisions and contingencies. Here we have to show all the provisions like uh, prov uh, provision on datas like uh, RBD or RDD then provision for taxation and so on. So, all such provision must come here in the third item under the expenditure that is provision and contingencies but it does not carry any note number ok. So, when you add all these three items you get total expenditure then profit of the current year will be equal to total income minus total expenditure ok. So, this is the format in which profit and loss account of a, a banking company is prepared. Then before we solve questions on preparing final accounts of banking companies we shall discuss one important concept because adjustment relating to that concept must be done while preparing the final accounts. The concept is discounting of bills. You have already learned bills of exchange chapter in your previous classes when you were in first BCom and hope uh, you know very well that when a customer is in requirement of the money he can discount the bill with the banker and the banker will credit the account of the customer after deducting some amount of money which is called banker's discount. The banker's discount purely depends on two factors the first one is what is the rate of interest the bank is charging and the second one the duration for which the bank has to hold the bill until the due depending on these factors the bank will calculate the banker's discount and deduct so much amount while crediting the account of customer. Let us take an example to make it very clear. Let us say a customer goes to the bank with the face value of the bill 1 lakh rupees ok and the bank here wants to charge 12 percent rate of interest. So, 12 by 100 and the duration of bill is 3 months ok. Let us suppose that the bill is drawn on this particular date and the same day the customer is going to the bank ok. So, the bank has to wait for 3 months to get the due date of the bill. So, it has to charge the interest for 3 months. So, 3 by 12. So, if you do the calculation the amount of uh, discount comes to rupees 3000. After deducting this 3000 that is bankers discount from the face value remaining 97000 will be credited to the account of customer. So, when this transaction is done what is the entry the customer will make in his book? The entry will be bank account data what is the amount he is getting 97000 bank account data then discount account data. So, what is this discount will be a loss that is that is why he is debiting discount account because from 1 lakh they have deducted the bank has deducted 3000. So, that will be a loss for the customer. So, bank account data discount account data to bills receivable account ok. Here you are crediting bills receivable because earlier the bill was in the hands of customer but now he has discounted the bill with the banker. So, it has gone to the hands of banker. So, that is why bills receivable account has to be credited. So, this is the entry 
which you have to make in the books of customer. That is what you have learnt in your previous classes. You have seen the transaction of bills of exchange from the point of view of the customer. But this chapter, that is final accounts of banking companies, we are learning about banks, okay, banking companies. So you have to see the transaction from the point of view of the banker. So now, what is the entry the bank has to make for this transaction? Please understand one thing here. The meaning of discounting the bill is nothing but from the customer, the bank has purchased the bill. What is the intention of discounting the bill for the banker? Here, the bank wants to earn some amount of profit by discounting the bill. In this example, if you see, the face value of the bill was 1 lakh rupees. From that, the bank has deducted 3,000 interest, nothing but discount. Only remaining 97,000 has been credited to the account of customer. Okay. Now, how the bank makes profit? On the due date, that is after 3 months, the bank will collect the same amount, that is the face value from the drawee. Okay? The bank is collecting 1 lakh, but it has given only 97 to the customer who has discounted the bill. Thereby, the difference between 1 lakh and 97,000, that is 3,000 is the profit which the bank is making. What is the entry the bank has to make for this kind of transactions? Okay? The entry will be bills purchased and discounted account data. Okay? Here, the bank has purchased the bill and it has discounted the bill. So, it will call from the name of bills purchased and discounted account data and it will write the face value of the bill that is in this example 1 lakh rupees. Okay? Then two customers account while purchasing that bill to the customer they have credited 97,000. Okay? Then two discount on bill account. So, discount account is credited here because it is a source of income, nothing but profit for the bank. Okay? What is the discount the bank has charged on the bill? 3000. So, this is the journal entry which the bank will pass for discounting the bill. As I said, discount on bill is a source of income for the banks. Okay? That is why the banks might be engaged in the business of discounting the bill almost every day. Okay. Here you have to understand one important thing. If the bills are discounted in the current financial year, having the due date also in the current financial year, then there is no problem at all. Okay. Whatever the discount the bank get on the discounted bills, that can be directly taken to the profit and loss account. For example, the current financial year ends on 1st April 2019 and ends on 31st March 2020. Okay, This is our current financial year. Let us suppose that this example which I gave, the customer is discounting the bill on the same day, that is 1st April 2019. As I said, the duration of the bill is for 3 months. Okay, April, full month you have to take. April, May, June. So, the due date of the bill will fall on 30th June 2019. In this case, the bill has been discounted on this particular date, that is 1st April 2019, okay, on the beginning of the financial year and the due date falls on 30th June 2019, okay. These two dates falls in the current financial year, then there is no problem. Discount is received during the financial year and it is also earned during the current financial year, okay. Let us suppose that there might be one more bill which is discounted on 1st July 2019 having the due date in the month of September. Okay. Similarly, there might be one more bill which has been discounted in the month of October having the due date in the month of December. Okay. So, if this kind of transaction comes, that is where the bill is discounted during the current financial year and the due date also falls in the current financial year, then there is no problem at all. Whatever the discount the bank charges, then that can be directly taken to the profit and loss account because it will be received and earned during the current financial year itself. But the problem arises when the discount is received during the current year but it will be earned during the next financial year. Okay? For example, suppose that this particular bill has been discounted on 1st March 2020. Okay? Then when the due date will come, it is discounted for a period of 3 months. Okay? So, March, April and May. Okay? It will have the due date on 31st May 2020. Out of total 3 months, that is duration of bill, the first 1 month comes in the current financial year, another 2 months that falls in the next financial year, that is April and May falls in the next financial year. 
if the bank uh, takes entire 3000 that is discount on bill to the profit and loss account of the current year whether it is correct okay it is not correct because the rule says that whatever the income or the profit which you have earned during the current year that should be taken to the profit and loss account okay whether you have received it or not that does not matter but whatever you have earned during the current financial year that has to be shown in the profit and loss account then out of this 3000 1000 will be earned during the current financial year that is during march another 2000 will be earned during the next financial year that is in the month of april and may you can take the same ratio that is 1 is to 2 okay now what is the adjustment required in this case because out of 3000 entire 3000 has not been earned during the current financial year it has been just received you can consider that income received in advance in other cases how you do the adjustment same way when there is income received in advance, you have to deduct that. Okay, In this case, 3000 has been received during the current financial year, but it has not been entirely earned during the current financial year. Out of 3000, only 1000 has been earned during the current financial year. So, it can be taken to the profit and loss account. But remaining 2000, which will be earned during the next financial year, it has to be deducted. Okay, So, this is called a rebate on bills discounted. Okay, In this case, if you consider this particular example, what is the alteration in the entry required? The entry will be bills purchased and discounted account data, face value of the bill that is 1 lakh rupees, 2 customers account they are crediting 97,000, 2 discount on bill, we have to write what is received and earned during the current financial year, they are earning only 1,000 and remaining 2,000 rupees, it has to be transferred to rebate on bills discounted okay this account is called rebate on bills discounted rebate on bills discounted is nothing but income is received in advance for the uh, banking company discount is a source of income so the discount has been received in advance it is uh, called by the name of rebate on bills discounted this is the adjustment required in the books of bank when the bill is discounted during the current financial year but the due date of which falls in the next financial year because the total discount will be received during the current financial year but some portion of that will be earned during the next financial year so that should be considered as income received in advance in the language of bills of exchange we call it as uh, rebate on bills discounted okay when this kind of adjustments are there we have to pass totally three entries let's see those entries the first entry will be passed when the bill is discounted the entry is the same as we discussed in the previous slide bills purchased and discounted account data with the face value 1 lakh two customers account we are transferring only 97000 two discount on bills so this 1000 is received and earned during the current financial year itself so it should be transferred directly to discount on bills account then remaining this 2000 which is received during the current financial year but it will be earned during the next financial year that is in the month of april and may that should be transferred to rebate on bills discounted okay this is the first entry relating to the transaction where we have rebate on bills discounted then the second adjustment is required when opening balance of rebate on bills uh, you know bills discounted is adjusted to the discount on bills account during the current financial year how we are transferring so this will be earned during the next financial year so this will be considered as rebate on bills discounted balance at the end of this financial year okay similarly there might be some rebate on bills discounted which they had adjusted in the last pre last year okay so that will be the opening balance for the current year nothing but it has been received during the last uh, financial year but which will be earned during the current financial year so all those income which is earned during the current financial year have to be taken to the profit and loss account so the rebate on bills discounted which is there at the beginning of the year is nothing but it is earned during the current financial year so it has to be transferred to discount on bills account okay so the entry will be rebate on bills uh, discounted account data to discount on bills account 
I will repeat once again at the beginning of the year if we have rebate on bills discounted it is nothing but it is the balance of the previous year in the previous year they have received that discount but it will be earned during the current financial year that is why during the current financial year it has to be considered as profit that is why from the rebate on bills discounted account we are transferring that to discounted a discount on bills account okay then the third entry has to be passed okay for transferring the total discount earned to the profit and loss account after doing all this adjustment we will be calculating what is the total discount earned during the current financial year that has to be transferred to profit and loss account the entry will be discount on bills account data to profit and loss account okay solve some questions on rebate on bills discounted because it will appear for six marks okay one short question where you have to calculate the rebate on bills discounted and also you have to show what is the ultimate amount of discount on bills which will be transferred to profit and loss account so this is the first question on 31st March 2016, the following balances appear in the books of Netravati Bank. Rebate on bills discounted on 1-4-2015. Nothing but it is the opening balance of rebate on bills discounted. So as I explained in the previous slide, it is received during the previous year that is in the year 2014-15 but it will be earned during the current financial year. Okay, So that is amounting to 3,20,000. Then total discount received during the current year they have 46 lakh then bills discounted the value of total bills discounted is 20 sorry 2 crore 95 lakh the average due date of all the bills discounted is 12th june 2016 and the average rate of discount is 15 percent per annum compute the amount to be shown in note number 13 that is interest earned in the profit and loss account of the bank this question they have given rebate on bills discounted at the beginning of the year that is 3 lakh 20 thousand but they did not give what is the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year that is on 31st march 2016 they have not given that is what we have to calculate here they have given the information to calculate as i said in the previous slide the discount on bills or rebate on bills discounted will be calculated on three factors that is first face value of the bill then second one rate of discount which is started by the bank and third one duration of the bill okay here the total value of the bill discounted is given as 2 crore 95 lakh and the rate of discount here they have given 15 percent per annum then coming to the duration of the bill here they have given that average due dates of the bill is 12th june means uh, our current financial year ends on 31st march 2016 then 12th june 2016 comes in the next financial year so we have to count the number of days from 1st april 2016 up to 12th june 2016 we will get the duration in number of days i'll show you the calculation as i said we have to count the number of days between 1st april 2016 up to 12th june 2016 okay because the average due date is on 12th june now uh, the days number of days between these two particular days we have to count in the month of april we have to take full month that is 30 days in the month of may also we have to consider full month that is 31 days and coming to the month of june there are 12 days so in total the total number of days will be 73 days so this is the duration for which the bank has to hold all the bills now how to calculate the rebate on bills discounted total face value of the bill of all the bills discounted is 2 crore 95 lakh into 15 percent rate of uh, discount into 73 divided by 365 days because here you cannot write the months okay like three months divided by 12 you cannot do so because the duration you have calculated here in number of days so you have to divide it by total number of days in a year so you get here rebate on bills discounted to the extent of 8,85,000 means that this 8,85,000 has been received during the current financial year but it has not been earned during the current financial year. It will be earned during the period between 1st April 2016 up to 12th june 2016 because this period falls in the next financial year okay so this is the calculation in the present uh, question and after that we have to show what is the ultimate amount of discount which will be taken to the profit and loss account what is the adjustment required total discount received is 46 lakh 
for that last year's balance that is opening balance of rebate on bills discounted we have to add because it is received during the last financial year but it will be earned during the current financial year so whatever is earned during the current financial year we have to add that so for 46 lakh we have to add 3 lakh 20 thousand but from this total amount we have to deduct 8 lakh 85 thousand because it will be earned during the next financial year so i'll show you the calculation total discount earned is 46 lakh we have to add the rebate on bills discounted on 1 4 2015 and then you will get total of 49 lakh 20 thousand from that we have to deduct the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year that is on 31st march 2016 amounting to 8 lakh 85 thousand so total discount which is received and earned during the current financial year will be 40 lakh 35 thousand so this has to be transferred to profit and loss account. So this was the solution for the first question then let us take up the second question the following is an extract from the trial balance of punjab bank limited as on 31st march 2016 they have given bills discounted so total value of the bills discounted they have given 6 lakh 32 thousand then rebate on bills discounted on 1 4 2015 nothing but it is the opening balance so it means that it is received during the last financial year but it will be earned during the current financial year that is why to the discount received we have to add that okay then discount received we have 52,854 total discount received whether it is earned or not they have received it okay an analysis of bills discounted is as follows they have given various bills so in total we have one two three and four bills so total there are four bills and these are the due date of these respective bills and the rate of discount they have charged on these bills are also given compute the rebate on bills discounted and amount to be credited to profit and loss account so there are two requirements first we have to calculate what is the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year that is on 31st march 2016 and after that we have to adjust the rebate on bills discounted at the beginning as well as end to the total discount received and see what is the total discount earned during the current financial year which will be taken to the profit and loss account okay first let's calculate what is the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the current financial year so this is the calculation uh, rebate on bills discounted on 31st March 2016 coming to the first bill it carries face value of 70,000 and the number of days that is the duration they have already calculated I'll show you the calculation how it should be done as it is given here the current financial year ends on 31st March 2016 okay but the due date of first bill falls on 5th June 2016 so we have to count the number of days between 1st April 2016 up to 5th June 2016 okay 5th June 2016 so in the month of April we have to consider 30 days in the month of May we have to take 31 days and in the month of June we have to take 5 days so total it will be 66 days so same total is written here okay then coming to the rebate on bills discounted 70,000 face value of the bill into rate of discount given here is 14 percent into number of days 66 divided by 365 it comes to 1772 so this is the rebate on bills discounted with regard to first bill similarly coming to the second bill the face value of the bill is 2 lakh 18 thousand and the number of days that is duration is given here 73 days how to calculate that from the uh, date of, of beginning of next financial year that is from 1 4 2016 we have to count the number of days up to 12th june okay in the month of april it is 30 days in the month of may 31 days and then in the month of june we have to consider 12 days okay 12 days in total it will be 70 three days so same 73 days are considered here so how did they calculate the rebate on bills discounted face value into rate of discount into 73 divided by 365 they got 6104 coming to the third bill we have the face value 1 lakh 41 thousand and how did they get this 86 thousand from 1st april 2016 we have to count the number of days between 25th june 2016 okay in the month of april we are considering 30 days in the month of may 31 days in the month of june we have to consider 25 days in total it will be 86 days okay this 86 days 
they have written here how did they calculate the rebate on bills discounted face value into rate of discount into number of days 86 divided by 365 days they get 4651 okay and in case of last bill the face value is 2 lakh 3000 and how did they get this 97 days from 1st april 2016 we have to count the number of days till 6th july 2016 okay 6th july so in the month of april there will be 30 days in the month of may 31 days in the month of june we have to consider 30 days and in the month of july we have to take 6 days okay so in total it will be 6 1 7 and 97 days so same 97 days are considered here so how did they calculate rebate on bills discounted face value is 2 lakh 3000 uh, rate of discount is 16 percent and number of days 97 divided by 365 so rebate on bills discounted on the fourth bill is 8632 so when they added all these rebates so total they get 21,159 so we got to know that rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year is 21,159 then coming to the last requirement that is um, we have to calculate what is the amount to be credited to profit and loss account okay as we discussed in the previous question also we have to first consider the total discount received in this case it is 52,854 for that we have to add the rebate on bills discounted at the beginning of the year because it is earned during the current financial year then we have to deduct the rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year because it will be earned during the next financial year i'll show you the calculation discount received is 52,854 then for that we have added rebate on bills discounted at the beginning of the year 11,080 rupees the total comes to 63,934 from that we have to deduct rebate on bills discounted at the end of the year amounting to 21,159 so total amount comes to 42,775 so this is the discount which is earned during the current financial year which will be credited to profit and loss account these are the two questions on rebate on bills discounted you can practice similar questions from the question back okay so that's it for this session i'll come up with the uh, final accounts of banking companies where we'll be preparing balance sheet and profit and loss account along with relevant notes in the next session okay thank you for watching